Hi, my name is Claire and I just love to knit. This video is part two of the Sneak Inside My Knitted Wardrobe series. I'm a little bit of an obsessive knitter, so over the last few years I have built up quite a collection. I've always knitted on and off throughout my life, but really during COVID that's when I really picked it up again. And since then I've been knitting about one to two pieces every month and most of them are garments. A lot of them have been gifted, but I do have a lovely little collection here that I will go through with you. So in my first video, I went through my first shelf, which are whites and light pinks. And today I'm going to go through my second shelf, which are, I guess, more pinks, pinks and reds. And this time I'm actually prepared. I've written down what each garment is, what the yarn I used are, and who the designers are. So please stick around and I will share with you all of these things that I made. Starting from the right top corner, I have a beautiful little pink vest. This is called the Wilson Jumper. I found it in a magazine, I can't remember what magazine, um, but it's by Nora Gorn. And um, I had this beautiful knit pig's pink in Cosmopolitan, it's called, and I really wanted to knit something with it, but I don't have a lot of yarn. So I decided to make a vest version of the Wilson. So in the front, you can see it's actually a little beetle and it's just Gorgeous. I held it with drop silk, kid silk, um, to give it a bit more of a fluffy look, and I didn't use the kid silk for the hem ribbing, neckline, and armhole ribbing. I absolutely love this, and I love the color, so I think I want to use this yarn and knit some more stuff. Second one here is a Serda vintage top. So I saw this jumper made by Kristen Leher of Fuller Mine Yarns on her podcast. And I kind of like vintage stuff as well, so I picked up the pattern straight away and I used the Ola Miera in Bud Burst. A Bud Burst. Oh, it is. Reading a vintage pattern was a pain in the bum. The writing is tiny, complicated, and very hard to read. So it took me quite a while to create this jumper, but it is it's so special. I've never seen any other um, patterns in recent times that knits like this. So you pick up on the sleeve edge here uh, in one piece actually so the front and back is one long piece you knit it towards the center and put it on hold then you knit the other side in one piece go towards the center join them together and then you pick up from here and then you use short rows and knit it down isn't it crazy i just love it it's so much fun to knit and it's so special to have this one is called the Be Mine Blouse by Park Williams. And the yarn I use, the La Bien Aimé Twist Nouveau, nu, Twist Nouveau in Amy's Flashy Red Lipstick. I love this color. That's why I think it's called the Amy's Flashy Lipstick. Um, it's like a beautiful, bright fuchsia. And Park Williams' design is really romantic and cute as well. So it's like a little blousy top with fitted waistline. Um, you've got the picot edging on the hem and on the neckline and it's got a little um, i-cord string in the back as well. I think I added this frill myself. I can't remember. If you check on my Ravelry page, I probably will say. Um, I just added this little frill thing on the collar, on the sleeves myself. Unfortunately, on my Ravelry, there's not a lot of description because until recently I had a business and um, I was so busy Knitting was kind of like a therapy for me. So I really didn't record the yarn I used, the weight of the jumper, the measurements, etc. So my old Ravelry is not um, very well archived. Um, but now that I have more time, I've sold, sold my business, I am putting a lot more thought into my making. I'm slowing a little bit down and I'm really enjoying the process a bit more rather than using it as a crutch to meditate after having a really stressful day at work. So. From now on, I promise my Ravelry will be a little bit more informative, but a lot of these you'll just see the yarn, but there won't be anything else on there, I'm sorry. This one here is called the Cassia Crossover by Refined Knitwear. I used a Cremique, Cremique, Sole Wool Silky. It used to be white. Two strands of mohair it used to be white and I loved it, but um, I find every time I hand wash white garments, it turns yellow. I know I shouldn't put it in the sun, but something in the Australian sun turns my jumpers yellow. 
even in the shade. And so it was like half yellow and half white. So I got my mom to dye it for me into this peachy pink, gumdrop pink, bubblegum pink. It still works. Kind of still works for me. Mom's actually got a couple more things over there. She's dying for me that has not been successful. So I'm waiting for her to see if she can fix my other white jumpers that have been ruined by the sunlight. This one is called the Aspen by Noragon. I use the Mill Post Merino in DK in Mill Post Red. It is a small Australian mill in the countryside in New South Wales, I believe. I first heard about them from the Fruity Knitting podcast, one of my favorite podcasts. And the design is Noragon. And I just love Noragon. I think there's at least five or six things in here by, by her. And it's got these cute little cables everywhere, um, cables on the one arm as well. And the construction of this is what drew me to this sweater. You actually knit from the front panel up, only the front panel. Once you get to the armhole, you cast down all of these stitches on each side and start with the sleeves. So it was actually a really long piece, right? Um, you keep going, cast off for the neck, and um, start doing the back piece, left side, right side, and then you cast on again, and then go down. So basically, you do one long flat piece with the arms, and then you, all you have to do is seam the arms and the sides. So clever. And after that, of course, you pick up for the neckline. My issue was I have pretty proportionally thick arms to my normal size, and my gauge is tight. So it was, that did not fit my arm. Mum had to help me come up with a solution so we created a whole other piece of fabric in here to insert how much is that it's about 10 centimeter insert put under the arm to fit my arms in it worked out in the end and I really like it but it's really really hot so I've only worn it worn it a couple of times when I went to overseas or when I went to Melbourne because you never need to wear this in Brisbane but um, I really like the arm so I may use it again one day then we've got the Shore Tea by Anne Menzel, and I used Pure Cashmere by Rowan. I bought it from the Rowan website when it was on sale because I love cashmere. It's light and warm. Uh, the color is called Port, as in port wine. So Anne Menzel, very simple, classic design. I love it. Yeah, the color is a little bit dark for me. It's funny, one of the girl at work, she's very straightforward. She looked looked at it, she's like, oh, I don't like this color. I'm like, lucky you're not the one wearing it. I'm the one wearing it. Anyway, next one. This is the Winged Whistles by Lega Song from Max the Knitter. Um, I, again, I've got maybe four or five things by Max the Knitter, Max the Knitter because I really, really like their aesthetic. Um, I had already made one a while ago. It's not here. Um, I used, the pink mohair I used was from, from Wandering Flock. It's a beautiful mohair, but it just drives me crazy. It made me so itchy. I will wear it for an hour and I break all my skin from scratching it. So I couldn't wear it at all. So I made another one. And this one I wore to Europe recently and it was perfect. And I love the color. The yarn is La Droguerie du Highland from the La Droguerie store in Paris that I bought in February last year. Um, they mix together a strand of merino and a strand of apaca for me together. This beautiful orangey red color. Again, I love it because I, I love red, if you can't tell. Red and pinks, they're my color. Oof, okay. Then we've got The Poet by Sari Nordland. Again, I just, I know I keep saying this, but I love this one. It's a fire engine red. This is the Walcott Yarns. Let me see what it said. Walcott Yarns Opus in Tropical Punch. And I think that's quite an apt name for it, isn't it? Um, very simple design. I just love the poet pattern in the middle of here. Sari has made this in quite a few variations now. I think she's made an all over pattern. She's done a neck down. She's done quite a few different versions of this. There may even be a poet sock. Can't remember. Don't um, quote me on that. But yeah. Very comfortable wear, great transseasonal piece that I wear all the time. Next one's another one of my favorite. This is the Reina de Pica. I think I was a test knitter for this by Valentina Bogdanova. The yarn is hedgehog fiber skinny singles in the color Sin. 
I love the names all of for all of these red yarns. Um, isn't that beautiful? Oh my god, look at the lace. It's got this beautiful tulipped kind of neckline. Um, I think the the inspiration for this was tulips or roses. Tulips or roses, one of the flowers, and it's just basically knit in the round, but the yoke is all lace. And oh, it is stunning. Every time I wear it, I get heaps and heaps of comments. Um, the front and back, you can't, it's hard to see, so I put a little tag here. So when I wear it, it's just a little bit easier to find the front and back. But there, there is some kind of short row. I think the short row is here under the lace to raise the back a little bit. The yarn is really, really good as well, the hedgehog fibers, even though it's got some variegation, but I don't mind. Usually I like solids, but this variegation works well. I can still see the rose, roses very well. Noragon number three. Yeah, Noragon number three already out of this little bit here. This is the Arbor Cardigan. Arbor Cardigan by Noragon. Um, I think I bought it for this pattern separately online. So the cardigan, I knitted this quite a few years ago. I really like it because I just wanted a big cuddly cardigan to wear around at home and on the weekend. The yarn I used is called Cleheaton, Cleheaton uh, Superwash Merino in DK. So initially I made this, initially I used this yarn to make a different cardigan. But it was, you know, super wash is heavy and drapey. The cardigan kept falling off my shoulders. So I unpicked it and I made this one. The cables are so intricate in the front and the back. Um, it's really warm and cuddly to wear. But once again, being a DK super wash, it slides off my shoulders. Even though it's a short collar, it's just really heavy. It falls open in the front. I think that's why I don't use Superwash very much because it's just not pleasant to wear. So if I'm going to wear this, I usually use a hair clip to clip it in the front or I need some kind of short pin to pin it close because it would just fall off my shoulders. My shoulders are very narrow and very sloped. So um, generally anything that's yoke based or v-neck cardigans, they don't work very well for me because they'll just fall off, fall off my shoulders. Speaking of round yoke sweaters, the next few, next two are round yoke sweaters, which don't really look good on my shoulders. This one I've recently finished. It's called the Stitches Sweater. It's a test knit for Veronica Lindbergh, who just recently had a baby. So I was very happy to be chosen as a test knitter for Veronica because I really like her stuff. Um, and this is the first thing I have made from her design. It's um, really cute, quick to knit. So much fun. Uh, I really, really like it. The sleeves are a little bit too loose compared to the body. It was, I'll link my other video in here for you to check out what I think about this jumper, so I won't talk to about, about it too much. Um, but yeah, very thick, so I'm not sure when I'll get to wear it. This one, this beauty here is called the Orbard. It is from, it's Orbard, designed by Fiber Creative, and it's from Pom Pom Magazine. I use the recommended yarn, which is the Isega Mohair and Isega, Isega Spinning. Everything will be linked down below. So I did everything according to pattern, yarn color, yarn choices. It's a little bit big for me, as you can probably see. A lot of positive ease. Um, I haven't worn it. I haven't worn it. I think it's because it's really hot with two strands and it's a short sleeve. So there's a bit of a mismatch there. It just my arms are too cold and my body is too hot. I just don't wear it. The color is a little bit too pale for me as well. It blends in with my skin color and washes me out. I tried to give it to mum, but she didn't wear it, so she gave it back to me. Not sure what I'll do with it. I really like the design. Maybe I'll make another one in a different color. But otherwise, I like it. Um, I do have a gripe about Pom Pom Magazine, which, should I get into it here? No, I won't get into it here. We'll talk about it another time. This one I actually really do like. It's the Cosselig by Isabella of 100 Acre Wool. So I was a test knitter for her. This is one of her earlier patterns a couple of years ago. Um, I used her recommended yarn, which is the Wool Folk Luft, and I used 14L, which is this beautiful beigey pinky color. The contrast, I used the Isega Alpaca 2 in color 3. 
it's a bit of a leftover from this next project here. So that's the leftover yarn that I use for the contrast. Uh, this is something I wear all the time in winter. It's really warm, comfortable. It doesn't fall off my shoulders. And um, yeah, it's just so cozy. The yarn is not scratchy at all. All Folk really is one of my favorite yarns. And, but it's expensive. It's currently on sale in Sunspun, the Melbourne yarn store. Maybe they are not carrying it anymore. But even at 20% off, it's a very expensive yarn. So I'm not sure do I stock up or not. I do have a thing about not adding to my stash at the moment since I don't have a job. No, I'm not going to buy it. I might, but I'm not. We'll see. Uh, but I really, really like this yarn. really like this jumper. The Latvian braid, that was the first time I did the Latvian braid on this. It's so clever. It looks really, really nice. The only thing that didn't work for me was the neck band. Uh, my gauge on ribbing is always really loose. So the front band around here, it was way too loose. And mum had to um, do a crochet for me to really squeeze it in and ease it in. And now it's fine. So if we were in a colder climate, I would definitely make another one of this. But no, I don't really get to wear this enough as it is. The next two are West Knits shawls. This is the Shawlography, which is the MCAL from a couple of years ago. I used all Alpaca yarns by Isega, Alpaca 2. Um, so there are five colors in the Alpaca 2. And I, did I hold a double? No, I held a single. I barely made a dent in all of the yarns. He said to get 100 gram of each, and I think I used like 30 grams of each color. So, you know, it's a great idea to sell yarn when you're doing MCAL, but there's always so much left, which is annoying. But I really like the shawl. It's beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I don't really wear shawls, so these are really here just for me to look at. I tried to auction these two off recently because um, the girl that used to work for me, her sister, at 19 years old, had a sudden onset aneurysm. And she was here in Australia on working holiday with no Medicare. So she was staying ICU at $6,000 a night. Uh, it was going to add up to $100,000 with all the ICU, the physio, the OT, and multiple brain operations. So I tried to sell these online um, to help raise some money for her. My mum bought them both back because she said these two are too special. So she donated $350 for each of these shawls to go towards the girl's sister, and then she got them back for me. And I know there were two other people online who really wanted them, but they didn't get it because mum bought them back. But, you know, it all went to a good cause. The girl is okay now. She's gone back to home country of Taiwan and she's recovering well. But it, it is so scary. You never know, right? 19 years old, aneurysm. She could very well have paralyzed or passed away. So very lucky they caught it on time. Terrifying. This is Fantastic. This, this is my first West Knits um, garment. I saw this online and um, I was following Stephen West for a while. Really liked his stuff. Not really for me, but I like looking at it. But um, I thought, sure, I can make it go, I can go crazy. So I went to our local young shop, picked out a few things and made the Fantastic. Um, it was my first time making a shawl. So down towards the wider bits, the stitch count was way off. I just stopped counting, but each time it was wrong, I just add a few stitch or reduce a few stitch. So I think it looks okay. No one can tell. Uh, I can't remember what the yarns are because I back then, again, I didn't really record anything. Knitting was a therapy for me due to work stress. I think it's a whole bunch of different super washes, fiber spades and things like that. Most of them are super wash. This is a alpaca suri. It is absolutely beautiful, but I can't remember the brand. It's got a little person on it. I may have the tag somewhere, but I, again, really love this, but never wear it because shawls fall off, fall off my shoulders. And that is why I started making shrugs. Um, I think maybe four or five months ago, late 2023, shrugs are all the rage. Um, Jackie Rose made one and Leslie Friend made one. So I thought I'll make some as well. And I made this around Christmas time. Um, when I had a bit of time, but I was starting to build up a lot of scraps and scraps stresses me out because I'm an efficient person. I like, every time I have a project, I need to find the yarn, which I have the perfect amount for because I don't want to waste. I hate having a 
150 grams of yarn left. What are you going to do with 150 grams? So I always try and find things that matches exactly. And of course, over time, my scraps started building up. And every time I look at it, I get stressed out. I need to use, use it up, otherwise it's a waste. So I put all my scraps together and made this friend-to-friend -friend shrug. It's a little bit small. That's why the model on my Ravelry page is my son. But it, it still fits. I haven't worn it yet. Uh, we're going on a cruise soon. Cruise. So I'll bring it with me. That might be useful for night time to just put over my shoulder. And it's not going to fall over my, fall off my shoulder, which is awesome. So it's a range of scraps. I have no idea what they are. Pinks and purples. This one um, I, is kind of the Jackie Rose shrug that she made. Uh, and I just decreased it because I didn't want it to be too wide around my neck. If it's going to be sure, it should be decreased, I think, to fit the neck a little bit better. This yarn is really special. It's called Adele's Mohair. It was a gift box. So, um, and it came all the way from South Africa. So I'm a part of a group called Entrepreneurs Organization and I am on the board. Every year they take the board to a global leadership conference and last year it was in South Africa. However, I was in the middle of selling my business and I couldn't go. And it was such a shame because it would have been a great trip. Everyone rated it really highly. Um, but luckily, Nikki, our chapter manager, hi Nikki, she, she thought of me and when she was at the market, she saw this yarn box. It was a beautiful big gift box full of different types of yarn and she bought it for me. It took me a while to think of something to make, but I made this awesome shrug, which I will wear this winter. Haven't worn it yet as well. Almost there. Uh, this is my PSD resistance, so let's talk about this one last. Folly skirt. The folly skirt is by Espace Tricot. Um, I use about 10 yarns, which I listed all in my Ravelry page. I don't think I put how much I used, just what they are, which is the maximum I was doing last year. Uh, I really like it. It was so easy to knit. It was in worsted weight um, and the color work was very addictive. You know, every time I'm like, just one more row, one more row, as you do. Every knitter knows what it feels like to just go one more row. I try to follow the colors as much as I can. I didn't buy the La Biename as I recommended because that was crazy expensive and there's no way you would use up a whole skein. So I used um, lots of Cascade 220s, some Derume Natura Gelatte. I didn't realize I had bought Gelatte before. Now I realize I have and I don't like it. I remember it's this caramel. I don't like the Gelatte. I don't know what the fuss is. Some drops, big merino, some Olan, and some Rowan Island blend. That must be the purple here. That's a leftover from my, my for fox sake jumper, which I gifted. I think I'll do another video on all the jumpers I've gifted because there are a lot. So yeah, the folly is good. I wear it. I've worn it quite a few times, and every time I get some great comments about it too. So yeah, it's always nice when you wear something you like that you made, and people give you positive comments, right? My favorite piece, the resistance, my Eiffel Tower, my one of my favorites. This is the Jane Seymour jumper. It is from um, the Alice Darmore book, Tudor Roses. So Alice Darmore, she is a very um, traditional Scottish designer. She also creates her own yarns. All of her designs are absolutely beautiful. It's tradition meets art meets avant-garde. She's a genius, basically. Her daughter Jade also designs and helps her with the young company and uh, managing the family business. This jumper here, oh my god. We've got color work, we've got cabling, we've got embroidery, we've got color work front and back because each bit is knit in pieces. We've got these little leaf things that you make up one by one and then join it all together, weaving in every single end. It's just, um, yeah, it was a lot of work. It took a quite a while, very tight gauge as well, and I had very sore hands. But I got there and I, oh, it is just, look at it. Beautiful. And all of these little dots, they are embroidered on after. So I bought this as a kit, which I do not regret at all. I bought it as a kit from Virtual Yarns, it came all the way from Scotland. It's Alice's Hebridean two-ply yarn range. So the sheep, it's um, it's sticky, but it's not scratchy, the yarn. 
from the Scottish sheep. And yeah, I don't know what else I can say except, oh my god, I just love it. Every time I wear it, I get comments. Um, I feel good about it. It fits perfectly, and it is just the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen. I am planning on knitting more Alistair Moore things in the future. Um, I have got her lapwing collar, which is downstairs. It's in the back of most of my videos because, again, it is another one of my peers to resus. My, uh, my pride and joy, other than my kids, this one, this one, and my lapwing, they're my pride and joy. Uh, so I definitely do want to knit more from the Tudor Roses book or from another one of her designs. But, um, yeah, it needs to be when I'm able to focus and spend a lot of time on knitting something. So there you have it. I hope you enjoy this video. As you can see, I really am passionate about knitting and I plan on doing a lot more and I am looking forward to sharing this journey with you. There we go, all folded and ready to go. Hopefully I folded them a little bit more tidier than before. I've also given it a bit of a wool and cashmere spray with the cedarwood scented flavor because uh, moths are not our friend. I've got cedarwood, cedarwood, and some moth repellent because moths are not our friend. Especially since I've used up all my scraps. I probably won't be able to mend it invisibly. Um, as you can see, I've run out of space. It's very tight. Uh, not sure where to put all of my new knits. I would love to find out how you store your knits. I'm not sure if I should buy another one of these IKEA it's called Mills bow. This is the IKEA Mills bow. It served me really well, but it's really full. I'm thinking about buying another one, but I'm not sure where I would put it because definitely not in direct sunlight and I don't like to have furniture everywhere in the house. So I'm still figuring out what to do next. Um, I would love to find out how you store your knits and um, do you display them like I do or do they live safely somewhere in a cupboard? But yeah, hope you enjoy this episode. If you want to see the rest of my wardrobe, make sure you stay subscribed and I will do another one in a few weeks time. See you then.